Ms. Hendricks is competent to stand trial, Your Honor. She understands the nature of the charges against her. Ms. Hendricks has a long-standing mental disorder. She's had psychiatric admissions since the late 80s. The week before <laughs> this crime uh, occurred, she was diagnosed in Dr. Shaboni's office as having a bipolar disorder, an obsessive compulsive disorder, a post-traumatic stress disorder, a generalized anxiety disorder, and a borderline personality disorder all of which are very significant mental illness. She has had diagnoses throughout her life. Miss Hendricks, as a child, had a very severe sexual abuse and physical abuse. Post-traumatic stress disorders are all secondary to that abuse that she experienced. Your Honor, I won't go into specifics, but I know from your time in the solicitor's office and as, as a judge, you've seen some very bad cases of sexual abuse. This is the worst I've seen. She has what we call a dissociative identity disorder. Uh, you might know it as a multiple personality disorder. I think it's very authentic. I mean, I've spent over 40 hours face to face uh, with her. It's a relatively rare disorder. I've seen uh, two people in my career that I think certainly had that disorder, her being the second one. And as far as being authentic, Your Honor, if you look on my resume, I lecture nationally on evaluating fraud and malingering and write on it. And this is as valid a presentation that um, I've seen. I have no doubts about her having that disorder. I have no doubts about that disorder affecting her ability to conform her behavior to the requirements of the law. Mm -hmm right from wrong in October of 2011. She would have known, the major personality would have known right from wrong at the time of the incident. She couldn't control the personality that would have presented herself to be committed. But in fact, she knew right from wrong in October of 2011. That's correct. The state has offered uh, to allow Ms. Hendricks to plead guilty to four counts of murder with a negotiated sentence of life for each of those. We, we agree with the defense's presentation that she could not conform and that she uh, would, would be considered guilty but mentally ill. The Higgins County Sheriff's Office responded to a 911 call at approximately 6.30 a.m. that came from Evelyn Burns, who stated that her sister, Susan Hendricks, the defendant in this case, had called her and stated that Matthew Hendricks, the defendant's son, had killed himself. Upon arrival at the scene, emergency medical personnel assessed Matthew's condition and found him to be deceased. According to the autopsy report, he was shot once to the left side of the head, slightly to the back. While there, the sister sees a trail of blood that leads into the bedroom of Linda Burns. When EMS personnel entered, they found Linda Burns, deceased, in her bed. She had been shot multiple times to the abdomen and right and left arm. The sister, Evelyn Burns, asked medical personnel and law enforcement personnel to go to the adjacent residence to check on Mark and Marshall Hendricks. When they arrived, they found Marshall Hendricks deceased lying on the front concrete porch slab outside of the residence. He was covered with a blanket. According to the autopsy, he had been shot once in the chest, once in the abdomen, and once in the upper right arm. When they entered the residence, they found Mark Hendricks, the defendant's ex-husband and father to Marshall and Matthew, deceased, lying on the couch. Autopsy revealed that he had been shot once in the chest. Susan Hendricks had told, told law enforcement that she woke up that morning, went to make coffee, and saw a note on the table from her son Matthew Hendricks saying what a good mother she was. She had then noticed a trail and immediately went into Matthew's room. However, we later found out that the blood trail that she had referred to actually led to Linda Burns' bedroom. There was no blood leading to Matthew's room. She said she had found him dead and she picked up the gun and put it on the bedside table. She did not call 911. She did not call Mar or Marshall Hendricks, who lived right beside her, but instead she called her sister, who lived several minutes from her. It was her sister who actually called 911. Marshall had been shot inside of the residence shot at it multiple times while running through the residence and finally shot to death outside on the front concrete slab. The defendant's statements, the forensic evidence, the DNA evidence would all conclude 
that the defendant did murder her sons, Marshall Hendricks and Matthew Hendricks, her ex-husband, Mark Hendricks, and her stepmother, Linda Burns. The defendant had the capacity to distinguish right from wrong uh, and to recognize her acts as being wrong, but because of her mental disease or defect, she was unable to conform her conduct to the requirements of the law. I further accept her plea of guilty but mentally ill as being freely and voluntarily made with the advice of extremely competent counsel. Your Honor, we come before you today to give you a small glimpse into the lives of Mark Matthew and Marshall and Linda. It is very difficult to put into words the effect her death has had and will continue to have on our family. Mark was a loving and self-sacrificing father. Matthew was full of love. He was fun loving, always smiling, very handy, loved outdoors and sports. He was the top of his welding class and was the one that started his own business. He was a hard worker and the top of his line at White America. He was an excellent artist and a mentor to young children. There are so many victims of it. The, the, the four victims who lost their lives, uh, the Susan Hendricks, who essentially gave up the rest of her life, she's going to go to prison. The extended family on both sides of this courtroom. And in fact, the Pickens community. This, this, this has been a tragedy for the entire community. Here today, sanity prevails, if I can say it that way. Um, a person diagnosed with severe and persistent mental illnesses can be held accountable in our system. And our society can be duly protected <coughs> without seeking the ultimate penalty. On murder, the sentence is a life to On murder, a life sentence. On murder, a life sentence. On the charge of murder, a life sentence. Good luck to you, ma'am. And thank, thank you all for being here. I'm so sorry for your loss. She certainly intended to murder the four individuals that she did, and she, she certainly covered it up when she, when she committed the crime. Um, as, as to motive, it's anybody's guess at this time. We had a number of motives that we looked at. It could have been all or a mixture of all of the above, but we really don't know the exact motive behind the defendant in this case. Uh, I don't really have a reaction. I mean, I guess I'm glad that she'll never have another free day, but yet at the same time, my cousins and uncle will never have a free day again either. And there's, I mean, they didn't have that choice. They weren't offered that choice. They didn't get to make any deals or bargains.